Okay, uh, excuse me. Um, so I'm going to introduce myself and Tom and Mike uh, because I think we're going to go one to the next to the next because our presentations kind of go together and really talk more to um, the behavioral health side of realignment. So um, I have been the executive director of CMHDA, the Mental Health Directors Association, for about 12 years and we've seen a whole lot of change over the past um, 12 years. Given the um, time frame that we have here, um, I, I could do a two-hour presentation on just mental health um, financing um, with Mike's help, uh, um, and Tom could probably do the same. Um, so we're going to try to give an overview about um, 1991 realignment and lessons learned, um, but it is not the exhaustive picture of community men mental health financing. Um, we've got lots of information if anybody wants more information. Um, Tom Remfrey is the executive director of CADPAC, where he also um, has been for the last 12 years, first as a legislative advocate and I think the last eight years or so um, as the executive director of CADPAC, um, the California Alcohol and Drug Program Administrators Association of California. And Mike Geis um, is the um, founder of Geis Consulting, which is a Sacramento-based um, management consulting firm. He's got um, over 25 years experience. Actually, if you added up the experience here, it would probably be well over 100 years of experience in, um, in, in public health, social services, and mental health. Um, he also is a consultant and um, has consulted for the state, including uh, the Department of Mental Health and, um, fortunately for us, for CMHDA and for CIMH. So I'm going to start and talk a little bit about Okay, I'm going to give an overview, a little bit of um, uh, 1991 realignment, 2011 realignment, and kind of um, uh, for mental health. Tom's going to talk a little bit about drug medical and the um, substance use side of realignment, and then Mike is going to give us um, some information, some valuable information about the financing and how this all works together. Um, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. Um, Graham did a really good job of outlining how 91 and 2011 realignment work in general, um, and particularly for social services and health. But I want to talk specifically about mental health. Um, and in order to give ourselves some context, start by talking about 1991 realignment like, like Graham did. Um, unlike the social services and health programs, when realignment occurred in 1991 for mental health, um, they were not entitlement programs. They were programs that were funded by the state and, and managed by the state, but they were not entitlement programs. Uh, so when realignment occurred, and, and um, by the way, we were, mental health was cut every year in every budget, and when you talk about um, the budget in 1991 being proportionately worse than what we've seen in the last couple of years, can you imagine what would have happened to mental health if, if um, they hadn't come up with a new revenue source and realigned it to counties, it would be non-existent at this point, or potentially um, non-existent. So what they did was they realigned all um, community-based mental health services to counties. Um, they realigned state hospital services for those who are civilly committed. And they realigned mental health services for those who are in institutions for mental disease. Um, which provide long-term psychiatric nursing facility care. By definition, um, a lot of you may have heard the term, a lot of you know very well, but a lot of you may have heard the term IMD and not really understood what that means. That's a federal Medicaid definition um, that, that says that if an uh, otherwise Medi-Cal eligible beneficiary is being served in what's considered to be an institution for mental disease, um, they are not eligible for federal reimbursement. So um, when the state transferred the responsibility for persons in IMDs 
including state hospitals and long-term nursing facilities and acute psychiatric hospitals to counties, that means that counties are responsible for paying 100% of the cost for, for individuals who would otherwise be Medi-Cal eligible in those facilities. Um, also uh, important to note is that this isn't an entitlement program and because of that, the language, uh, the Bronze and McCorkadale Act that goes along with realignment or that provides a structure for 1991 realignment um, outlines what the levels of care and the systems of care should be and counties' responsibilities, uh, but they're all to the extent resources are available. They are not an entitlement. So there were many benefits um, of 1991 for mental health, and unlike the social services and, and health accounts, um, mental health realignment counties um, got lots of flexibility. They, they, um, the responsibilities to the extent resources are available were outlined in the Bronze and McCorkadale Act, but, um, but counties had the flexibility because these are not entitlement programs to provide services um, based on what the, they saw were the needs of the individual to the extent resources are available. Um, the incentive really built into 1991 re mental health realignment um, because counties are responsible for state hospitals, institution for mental disease, and all other community-based mental health services. Uh, the incentive was to provide services to the individual um, in the least restrictive setting that um, that helped the, to serve the needs of the individual. So the incentive is not to institutionalize people because it costs more. Um, the incentive is to provide services closer to home in a setting that um, is the least restrictive and most appropriate. 91 realignment gave county mental health programs um, a stable source of funding for the first time, which made long-term investment in the mental health infrastructure financially practical. So if you look back prior to 1991, counties um, really were subject to the state general fund budget process, and they really couldn't predict from one, one year to another how much money there would be in the state budget. So they really couldn't build an infrastructure. They couldn't plan from one year to the next um, because they didn't have any certainty about what the funds would be. Um, it gave them the ability to use funds to reduce the high cost restrictive placements and to serve clients appropriately in the community. Um, and, it, and it gave them for the first time the ability to um, create what, what I, when I first came to CMHDA, people used to refer to as realignment trust funds. It actually gave them the ability to um, roll funds over from one year to the next. Um, because they knew that the money wasn't going to go away the next year, that they could actually put some money into a reserve um, for downtimes and to really think about this, the, the system that they were trying to build. Um, and it gave them an emphasis on a clear mission, was, which was outlined in the Bronze and McCorkadale Act and, and a defined target population. Um, just as an aside, and you'll see in the um, slides that are coming, those realignment trust funds for the most part don't exist anymore because of the um, structural issues with 1991 realignment for mental health and because of the economy. So um, here are some of the problems that we realized over time with 1991 mental health realignment. Um, first of which is that because of the guaranteed caseload growth um, that was given to social service entitlement programs, and because of subsequent statutory changes to those social services realignment programs, um, primarily child welfare and in-home supportive services, um, they got the first um, guarantee of growth in the realignment revenues, and um, it resulted in less and less growth coming to county mental health programs to the point where there was really no sales tax growth going to mental health realignment over the past few years. And this chart, I've provided a chart that goes through 0910. You'll see updated figures uh, from Mike Geis that, that will give you um, the last few years plus the projections for the, for the next few years. But you can see during the, the bad economy when people talk about the um, core services um, or core funding for 
community mental health. Um, the way it was supposed to work is, you know, you, you collect the revenues until you establish your base and then you get whatever growth um, is on top of that to, to hopefully have, have some growth in your, your funding. As you can see, starting in 2007, 2008, we didn't even make base. So not only did we not receive growth for the 1991 mental health realignment account, we um, significantly lost money. Um, and I think it was about $200 million a year when we got to 08, 09. Um, so this is no state action to reduce community mental health. It was just based on the structure of 1991 realignment. Um, and then we, we lost money again in, in 0910. And I think you have 1011, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, that was 1991 mental health realignment. And I could have, um, I, like I said, I could have included lots of information that, that talks about the um, complexity of community mental health financing. Part of that complexity is Prop 63, the Mental Health Services Act, um, but we're talking about realignment here. But I just, um, as, as an aside, um, if you see the chart that I just showed you that, that showed the decreases in funding for community mental health, um, if you understand that counties also manage the mental health Medi-Cal program um, and have to be able to provide the, the match for that, um, there is no way, if we didn't have MHSA during those down years, that we would have had um, our we we would have been able to maintain a community mental health system. It was that um, difficult. MHSA, which was meant to expand services and not supplant, it just happened to come along a couple of years prior to a major downturn in the economy and um, Prop 63 really was our savior. Um, and you heard from Senator Steinberg this morning what it's meant to, to our system. Um, so fast forward, we manage the Medi-Cal program. We, um, we have um, lots of flexibility and opportunity with Prop 63, the MHSA. And then um, in 2011-12, we, um, we had another major downturn in the economy. Um, or I should say we had a major budget problem, and um, there was money diverted from the MHSA to pay for really what would have been the first year of public safety realignment, um, and it was put off for one year for community mental health because the state diverted $861 million from the MHSA um, to pay for the state's obligation of what would have been realignment um, of the Medi-Cal mental health program from the state to the counties. So um, we lost a big chunk of money in 11-12, um, uh, and realignment for mental health didn't occur until actually 12-13 because um, the MHSA supplanted basically the state's obligation for that program. So. Um, Graham talked about 2011 realignment. The um, philosophy that went along with this from the governor was that um, programs should be realigned to the local level, public safety realignment programs should be realigned to the local level where um, counties have the flexibility and where services are closer to the people. Um, and what you, sorry, what you see here um, is what he included in his budget. In, in proposing public safety realignment, the goals. Um, one of these that I highlighted here is um, to provide as much flexibility as possible to the level of government providing the service um, to be more cost effective, et cetera. Um, the, the bullet point about flexibility is a little bit of a bone of contention probably at this point for, um, for the county behavioral health account. Um, We'll get into that in a couple of minutes. So this is the structure, the, the structure that Graham was talking about, um, the support services account, the protective services sub-account, and the behavioral health sub-account under the support services account, um, and then the law enforcement. So you see that there's no transferability between law enforcement um, and support services, but there is transferability between protective services and behavioral health. 
and and um, it's important to note the the different programs that are included under the behavioral health sub account. Um, also key, one, one of the lessons learned for counties um, in 1991 realignment was that we didn't have constitutional protections. And when I talked about the changes in the entitlement pro social services programs and the impact that that had on um, county mental health and and health, um, we kind of learned our lesson after that and um, decided that counties, if we were going to take on all these new responsibilities, really needed to have some kind of constitutional protection that protected against um, changes in state law, changes in federal law, court decisions, etc. And so the constitutional amendment or constitutional initiative not only um, provided the revenue source to pay for realignment 2011, but it also critical to counties um, says that the state must provide funds for new laws after September 30th of 2012 or new regulations, executive orders, administrative directors, uh, directives that increase costs of local services mandated by 2011 realignment. Um, it also says that unless the state provides funding, the state cannot submit federal plans, waivers, spas that increase local costs, and that the state uh, must provide 50% of needed funds for changes to federal statutes or regulations or federal judicial or administrative proceedings. So in other words, if there is something happening at the state or federal level that um, is not um, due to to something that the counties have done, it's, it's actually due to the state or federal action then, um, that we don't have any control over, then, then the state has to share 50% of that cost. So these are the programs that were realigned. Um, and unlike 1991 realignment for mental health, um, in 1991, the social services programs were largely entitlement programs. In 2011, some of those are still entitlement programs on the social services side, but the mental health programs were um, entirely entitlement programs. So um, we don't have nearly as much flexibility in manage the, managing these programs as we did with 1991 realignment. So what was transferred was Medi-Cal specialty mental health managed care, including the early and periodic screening diagnosis and treatment program for children and youth. Um, and again, I want to um, emphasize that the entitlement is Medi-Cal specialty mental health. The children's services and EPSDT are a part of the um, Medi-Cal specialty mental health entitlement. All services are an entitlement to those beneficiaries that need that level of care. Um, drug Medi-Cal, including EPSDT, drug courts, perinatal drug services, non-drug Medi-Cal services, Medi-Cal managed care, um, and again, substance use early and periodic screening, diagnosis, and treatment. Um, basically, everything that was left in um, the state general fund budget for mental health and substance use was taken out of the state general fund budget and um, realigned to counties with a dedicated revenue source. Mm -hmm. it, it's the same. Sorry. Uh, so for uh, realignment 2011, Medi-Cal specialty mental health managed care, counties, according to the statute that um, the, the superstructure, realignment superstructure, counties must fund Medi-Cal specialty mental health services, including EPSDT, from monies received from the 2011 behavioral health sub-account and the behavioral health growth special account. So that's the money that's actually, that was identified in the budget to pay for the specialty mental health Medi-Cal programs. Um, and it was the um, money that the state estimated would have been what they would have paid counties um, that year had the program not been realigned to counties. Um, they can also use 1991 realignment mental health sub-account money and they can also use MHSA funds to the extent permissible under the act. What this means is counties are the managed mental health plan for community mental health. 
They are responsible for ensuring the entitlement to beneficiaries. They are responsible for providing the certified public expenditure to, um, for the services. In, in other words, putting the money up front, paying for the services, and then submitting the claim and, um, and hoping to get federal reimbursement for um, the federal match. Um, if they don't have enough money uh, from 2011 realignment dollars, then they have to use 1991 realignment dollars. If they don't have enough money, um, and to the extent it's permit permitted by the MHSA, they can use MHSA dollars to meet that obligation. Uh, but it is an entitlement program. And this is just to show you the, um, the importance of understanding the structure of community mental health financing um, to our ability to meet the Medi-Cal entitlement, but also to meet our other obligations for other realigned programs. This, uh, and again, Mike is going to talk um, more about the financing, but this um, pie chart shows you where community mental health funding comes from right now, and you can see um, that where 1991 realignment used to be the primary revenue source, um, MHSA is, is, um, is actually surpassing that amount, and FFP, which means you know, the amount of money that we get back from the federal government after meeting our um, CPE obligations is a, is a growing source of revenue for community mental health. So it's very important that we maximize our federal revenues using whatever we can use as match in order to pull down those additional revenues to keep our community mental health system going. And as you can see, um, 2011 revenue source is one of the smaller revenue sources in the, in the pie. So again, this reinforces um, that in order for, for us to make the Medi-Cal specialty mental health system work, we have to have sufficient funds and cash flow in order to be able to put the money up front to pay for the um, services to those who are um, entitled to Medi-Cal services. Um, but we also, um, because we have a rehabilitative services system and, and we have the Medi-Cal rehab option, um, we want to maintain a recovery and rehabilitation focused overall public mental health system. Um, and we try to blend all of our um, financing together so that regardless of whether you're Medi-Cal eligible or not, the services and the array of services that are available are based on um, what, what that individual needs at the local level. So here are some of our concerns as we um, are adapting to 2011 realignment and to the new um, obligation and, and risk that we've assumed with the, with the entitlement program. Um, in order for this to work for counties, because this is an entitlement program, we, um, we really need to have a healthy partnership between the state and the counties to maximize federal resources and to minimize unnecessary administrative requirements and focus on quality and results for the covered population. And, and what that means is, you know, let's get out of each other's way, and make sure that the systems um, and the regulations and requirements that we have at the state level are as streamlined as possible to allow us to pull down as much federal funds and that we concentrate on as possible and concentrate on quality and outcomes. Um, another concern, um, as you can imagine, is now that we have the full financial risk for this entitlement program, um, we um, hope, just like the social services accounts did um, in 1991 realignment, that, that the realignment revenues will generate enough growth to match the expansion of Medi-Cal enrollment and the need that will occur over time. Um, it's particularly important as we move toward implementation of the ACA and other Medi-Cal coverage expansion in the coming years. So um, specifically, some of our concerns related to the mental health realignment is that um, counties are assuming the risk for this entitlement population. Um, it now includes the healthy families um, transition from healthy families to Medi-Cal. So counties are absorbing the, um, 
the new healthy or the healthy families beneficiaries into the Medi-Cal system and are responsible for ensuring that entitlement. Um, it includes um, the KDA settlement lawsuit and whatever uh, requirements come out of the implementation plan for KDA. And it includes the, um, the mandatory or the expansion of the, what, what the state's calling the mandatory population. In other words, those who um, are currently eligible for the current Medi-Cal system, not the expansion population, but the mandatory population with the renewed emphasis on really trying to enroll as many people into um, a, an insurance program as possible, the state is um, assuming, and so are we, that there will be new people that are found that are eligible for our current Medi-Cal specialty mental health program, and uh, when they are, counties will be responsible for those individuals. And one of the things that we need to do and that we're asking Mike to help us with is to try to estimate what the impact is going to be on county mental health to absorb those new enrollees that weren't really um, included in the estimate for, um, for realignment for mental health. Um, and, and again, um, the 2011 realignment completed the entire um, comprehensive shift of responsibility for community mental health from the state to the counties. Okay, this, is where, I, on. this is where I come in, tag team here. Uh, I'm, I'm very conscious of the time, so I'm going to uh, keep uh, my uh, comments to about seven to ten minutes, and then Mike said he's got about, about the same, about ten to fifteen. So we'll try to do this in a timely way. Um, substance use disorder services uh, were not part of 1991 realignment. The first time we were realigned was last year, 2000, uh, I'm sorry, 2011. And uh, Pat showed you the list of the services. Uh, basically, all of our alcohol and drug treatment services were part of the realignment. But the, I'm only going to talk about one service here. It's the biggest part of our uh, realignment uh, uh, account um, and the behavioral health subaccount for our services and it's also the entitlement program for uh, substance use services and that's drug medical um, the we really have I think a like a parcel realignment of drug medical and the reason I say that is is because the the counties now have the responsibility and the, and the fiscal risk for administering and funding drug medical services uh, at the local level but the state retains the ability, uh, a certain authority over the drug Medi-Cal program. For example, the state still has the responsibility for certifying drug Medi-Cal providers, monitoring those programs. The state continues to set rates. Uh, and probably of most concern to counties is that the state retains the ability to contract directly with providers that the county may not want to contract with. Uh, and, but the state uses the county's realignment money to pay for, to fund uh, those direct contracts. So that's probably one of, the, one of the big issues that we're dealing with right now under Drug Medi-Cal. Uh, because it is an entitlement program, uh, it, Drug Medi-Cal services cannot be capped. There's a limited number of services, but they are entitlements. Uh, they operate on a fee-for-service basis. There are, counties do not have administrative and clinical controls on utilization. Uh, unlike the mental health system where counties can, you know, have those uh, abilities to manage uh, the, the services, we don't have that uh, under, under Drug Medi-Cal. Uh, so financing Drug Medi-Cal caseload growth becomes a local responsibility under realignment, but the mechanisms for accommodating and funding and managing, I should have put, caseload growth are, are not uh, defined. There is language in the realignment bill that says you know, with regard to drug medical entitlements, that if the county uh, runs short of drug medical funding to pay for the to pay for the services, any other county funds have to be used or can be used to pay for those services. So that's a you know that's a lot of fiscal exposure for counties. I'm just going to go uh, quickly through the services uh, or through the the federal Medicaid law that applies to drug medical. Uh, you see here the. The, uh, there's comparability of services. Uh, the services have to be uh, s statewide. Uh, they must be delivered with reasonable promptness. Uh, 
And, and again, this choice of providers is the issue here that is, is probably the most pro uh, problematic because any willing provider who's drug Medi-Cal certified can provide services to any client and they send the bill to the county. Um, and then there are EPSDT assurances that the state has to provide assurance to CMS that all EPSDT eligible children will receive all federally covered services even if they're not specified in the state's Medicaid plan. And then on top of that we have the transfer of healthy families youth uh, to Medi-Cal which will increase uh, county responsibilities. And none of these, by the way, none of these have been waived. There are no waivers on any of these requirements. So under realignment, counties are now financially responsible for a, a system of care over which uh, they have little ability to manage. Uh, manage. Uh, so we are looking at pursuing e either statutory changes and or state plan amendments uh, in, in, order, in order to enable counties to manage their provider networks while still ensuring that all Medi-Cal eligible clients have uh, ready access to, uh, to services. And um, I'm not going to have time to go through each of these, but uh, we're looking at provisions that we can perhaps do through a fiscal state plan amendment, such as uh, CPE claiming protocols that allow counties to have the same ability as the state to certify and recover their administrative costs, uniformity in rate setting uh, to ensure that counties' full uh, administrative costs are covered, they receive maximum FFP, uh, budget, we're trying to bring budget cost reporting requirements, billing and claims uh, processes more in line uh, with mental health so that you know, there's not two separate, uh, uh, two separate uh, procedures for uh, substance use and mental health. And then some statutory provisions. Um, we, we're, what we would like to do is enable count, give counties the statutory authority and perhaps some of this may have to be done through a waiver to be able to have some control over their provider networks. So uh, counties have the, must have the ability to select and deselect providers on the basis of the county's need for services and the provider's compliance with uh, performance standards and requirements that the county may require them in their, in their contracts. Uh, and, and, and to limit the state's ability to enter into direct contracts with providers who choose not to contract with counties because perhaps they don't like the county's requirements or whatever, so they can't just do an end run and go to the state to, because they can get a better deal. Uh, so that would be another change that we're seeking. Uh, and then since counties provide the CPEs, the rate setting process uh, should be a, a collaborative venture between the state and the counties. Uh, again, giving counties a little more, more control over the, over the rate setting as well as over their uh, provider networks. Um, that's just a repetition of uh, what we've, some of what we've already talked about. And then, um, I'm not going to do that slide. I want to say one other thing before I turn it over to Mike. Um, there, there is another aspect of realignment, the public safety realignment under AB 109. Uh, where this is not part of the behavioral health account, but AB 109 funds can be used. In fact, counties are encouraged to use uh, some of those funds to provide mental health and substance use disorder services to offenders under community supervision. Um, we, uh, CMHDA and CADPAC recently conducted a joint survey where we went to, to all the counties and said, how, how are things working around AB 109? Are you being able to access you know, are you part of that process? Are you able to access any of those funds? And uh, the, the slides are in your packet, so you can look at that, because I won't have time to go over it here, but we found out of 52 counties who responded, we got, an, you know, we got a good response rate. It looks like most counties are spending between 6 and 10 percent of their AB 109 funds on, on mental health or substance use uh, rehab services. And, uh, then there's, we had very other questions on the mechanism for, uh, for reimbursing those services, how the treatment level uh, needs and levels were determined, and uh, what areas of, of concern. As you can see here, uh, the biggest area of concern is the need for other services such as housing and medication, uh, job training, and that kind of thing. So um, again, I'll just refer you to your, uh, to your slides in the packet um, for the rest of that. And so. Um, Last slide here, how the state, uh, the unknowns, things we're still working on for the future, how the state will comply with uh, parity requirements for uh, 
mental health substance use. We, we heard a lot of discussion about that in the, in the larger group, uh, how the carve-outs will be, you know, uh, fit into that. And then the, in, the impact of increased enrollment in the, in the mandatory population due to health care reform eligibility changes and uh, the ability of counties to absorb that. So I think I will end there and turn it over to Mike. And could I just say yeah. one more thing as we're making the transition? Um, one thing I didn't point out is um, a concern for both substance use and mental health is that we are in the same behavioral health sub-account together. Um, and to the extent that the drug Medi-Cal program is not a managed program, and ours is, but we both have entitlement responsibilities, that is a big issue for counties. All right, um, good afternoon. We're gonna spend a, a couple of minutes here now talking about the actual numbers. Um, you've heard quite a bit about both um, the framework for both 1991 realignment and 2011 realignment. Um, and so I'm gonna just go through uh, some of the actual funding estimates for um, both of these programs. Um, again, uh, probably the, the biggest thing to know for the 91 realignment the primary driver are taxable sales um, and to a lesser extent uh, state vehicle license fees um, and then mental health uh, we get a little bit more we get 14 million in what's called state vehicle license fee collections which are the the penalties paid by folks who don't um, pay their vehicle registration on time um, what happened, and again, this has, uh, Graham kind of touched on it a little bit. This is a little bit more detail because it does impact um, the financing of services or, or the um, 1991 financing of mental health. Um, there was a swap between the CalWORKs uh, maintenance of effort with um, our mental health 1991 realignment that began last fiscal year. Um, the CalWORKs MOE was funded with uh, realignment revenues that would have gone to mental health um, consistent with the the statute in the welfare and institutions code and then mental health services our 1991 realignment was funded with um, the 2011 realignment sales tax revenue uh, there was a guaranteed amount in uh, fiscal year 11 12 um, and then beginning in 12 13 it, it's more of a guaranteed minimum amount um, because once the CalWORKs MOE equals the amount of the mental health realignment funding uh, on the 91 side, then there begins to be growth um, allocated to um, 1991 mental health realignment um, from the 1991 account. Uh, I, I do want to say that there is a proposed budget trailer bill um, that would change that somewhat and take half of the growth that would have gone to mental health, um, into the mental health sales tax, and split that between the CalWORKs MOE and mental health beginning in 15-16, and that is part of the, the budget trailer bill um, for the, the current proposed budget. The other uh, way in which 91 realignments linked with 2011 is that um, 1991 gets 5% of the growth in the um, 2011 support services account, uh, beginning in 12-13. It, it's a, what I would characterize as a one-time type of um, uh, distribution because it doesn't impact the base. Um, so it, it's kind of a little little bonus there. So in, in terms of, um, you know, looking at the history, uh, again, talking about um, realignment sales tax, so, so we had this increase. We actually had a pretty large increase from fiscal year 0102 through fiscal year 0607. All that funding went to um, cover the increase in social services caseload costs, about $600 million. Um, then we saw this uh, dramatic decline in terms of the sales tax revenues, um, where mental health declined about $150 million um, from 0607 through 910. Um, We've now seen a subsequent increase uh, in the sales tax revenues. Um, that increase has been covering the, um, the social services caseload costs growth that had been building up during those declining years. 
And then um, looking at various sources, looking at the administration's forecast, the legislative analyst forecast, and a couple of other um, economic forecasting firms, uh, it looks like taxable sales are forecast to grow somewhere around 5 to, to 8 percent for the next several years. So we are looking at um, some positive growth in the sales tax revenues for uh, the 91 realignment account. The, the other thing that happened, and Graham touched on this a little bit, there have been some positive inroads to help mitigate the growth in uh, social services caseload costs, um, such as the coordinated care initiative that um, provides a, a in-home supportive services maintenance of effort for, for the counties. In terms of vehicle license fees, uh, same sort of thing. We had the cyclical up and then uh, significant down. Um, mental health gained about $100 million uh, over that period of 102 through 06, 07, and then subsequently lost all that money um, from 06, 07 through 11, 12. Um, again, a little bit slower growth than the sales tax, but it, it is forecast to grow again as, as the economy um, continues to kind of motor along. And again, vehicle license fees are um, 14 uh, million per year. But just to give you an idea, so, so overall in 11-12, the, the mental health realignment funding, the 1991 realignment funding was about the same in absolute dollars as fiscal year 2000-2001. So we, we covered a 10 year period and we're basically at the same funding level, not accounting for um, increased cost of, of doing business or population. So, um, you know, here, here are the numbers, um, and they're all in your charts or in your packets, so you don't have to write them down. Uh, you, you can see again how in 11, 12, and actually, so what I did is um, I separated the base amount from the growth in base from the one-time growth from the 2011 account. Um, the, uh, the growth in the base, what, what you need to know there is what we're showing is the year in which it's earned. But technically, you don't know that until the subsequent fiscal year. So when we start to see some growth in sales tax going to our 91 realignment in fiscal year 13-14, that amount isn't actually known until we're into 14-15. So the way that most counties, um, being conservative, would uh, budget an expenditure against that dollar would be um, in the subsequent year that they wouldn't budget um, an expenditure not knowing what that growth is going to be um, in that year. And so the reason you start to see growth in 13-14 um, in our base is again because we believe that the CalWORKs MOE will be met, the 1.12 um, billion, and so that we will start to see some growth um, a little bit in 13-14 and more in 14-15. Um, then again, we see that uh, the one-time growth or the growth from the 2011 account that just comes over um, to the uh, to the 1991 um, realignment account. And so, going back to that other question, uh, you know, we, we basically were at a peak in terms of mental health realignment funding in fiscal year 0607. Um, that peak was about 1.231 billion dollars. And you can see the forecast that uh, we're looking at in 1415 is at about that same level. So again, in terms of absolute dollars, um, when we get to 1415, we, we are probably back to about where we were in 0607. But again, not taking into account the cost of doing business or the costs of um, you know population growth. The the other thing that this shows is that. Um, that sales tax growth is estimated to be, um, once the, the CalWORKs MOE is hit, it's estimated to be around $50 million. So the budget trailer bill that proposes to, to take half of that and put it towards the CalWORKs MOE in 15-16 um, would be about a, a $25 to $30 million um, uh, hit to, um, to mental health. Okay, 2011 realignment. Um, this is all, from our perspective, sales tax. Um, again, the one thing that, uh, that Pat had already talked about was that in 11-12, MHSA funds were used for um, mental health services. And so here um, you can see the different programs um, that are uh, in the behavioral health sub-account. Uh, you'll see that the numbers are basically the same for every year from 12-13 through 14-15 on a program level. 
Um, but then I provided the growth estimates down below. And the reason for not uh, taking the growth and trying to put it into programs is because that has not yet been determined. Um, the statute uh, created a behavioral health subaccount um, that has to fund these different programs. It did not then further say that a certain amount of growth is supposed to go to each of these programs, and um, that is, is still being discussed. Uh, again, as, as I think Graham talked about, um, part of the growth in this account in the early years is to restore $200 million to the child welfare system. And so in 1213, um, and to a lesser extent, 1314, um, a lot of the growth uh, is going to child welfare services. Uh, we believe that that will be met by the time we get to 1415, um, which is why you see a, a large uh, amount of growth going to um, the behavioral health subaccount in 1415. And so it is, and you can see the year over year change at, at the very bottom. But again, I'll, I'll caution, caution you, the way that the growth works is just like the, the way the growth works in the 91 realignment. Um, it's not known until you're already into the next fiscal year. Um, and so the way most counties would tend to budget that is you budget base, and then when you get the growth, you, you would do a budget adjustment in that subsequent year. And so uh, to kind of wrap things up in a couple of minutes here, um, you know, I think Pat hit on this, um, that the 91 and the 2000 real, uh, realignments are, are really just part of the overall uh, community mental health funding system. Um, I said behavioral health fiscal pie. This actually is just a mental health fiscal pie. Um, but I think the same issues would apply to substance use disorders in that we've got most of our revenues are driven by um, economic conditions, sales tax, um, MHSA, the 1% the tax on millionaires. And so when times are good, revenues are high, um, which is, is uh, counter-cyclical, or the, the service requirement tends to be a little bit more counter-cyclical because when times are bad and our revenues are down is when our, our service requirements are a little higher. Um, our federal reimbursement, our, our federal financial participation in the Medi-Cal program is really limited by our ability to incur certified public expenditures with these other revenue sources that are driven by the economy. So um, it's all interrelated. Obviously, 2014, even though we can kind of project what we know now, um, this pie could look completely different. So um, I'd like to go ahead and open up for a couple minutes of questions. Yes. So are you saying, however, they must, the, the additional revenue has to go towards uh, child welfare? So this is just growth in the behavioral health sub-account. The child welfare is outside of this. So that's why you see lower growth in some of the early years, um, and then we start to see more growth in, so in the out years. Yes, yeah, I, I would agree with that 100%. Yes, and I, I mean, but again, cautioning you that that growth that you see in 1415 isn't really known until 1516. So, so we do have a couple of years here where we're going to have a little bit of growth, but not a lot. Um, and if we can kind of wither, you know, the next couple of years, but at the same time, you know, with the Affordable Care Act kicking in, it may look entirely different than what you see here. I believe that reserve applies to the whole pot of 
dollars related to 2011 realignment, but to the extent that you create a reserve, there are there's still a wall between the law enforcement side and the supportive services side. Right. I'm not aware of any county that's actually taken that, moved that step um, at the moment. There may be counties that are out there that have actually. I think the current challenge is we've all spent so many years just trying to hang on to what we've got. How do we take one or two percent off the table now while we're still not being, we're still not meeting the core service demands that we're seeing out there in the community? <coughs> And, and the growth in the future, um, you know, that's supposed to be proportionate to the different accounts, um, the, our proportionate growth for mental health and substance use isn't going to be there until um, th 14, 15, most likely because of paying back. Yeah, maybe. Um, so really, and, and hopefully if the economy continues to be doing better, um, there will be enough to actually, you know, meet the obligations and um, start to be able to expand services a bit, um, but until then, you know, you're not going to want to put too much into a reserve account if you're not able to meet your current obligations or it's, you know, difficult to manage currently. Healthy Families for Mental Health anyway was, um, that, that took place statutorily before the um, constitutional amendment went into effect. KDA, um, because the, the implementation of KDA and the terms of that were not um, completed at the time of realignment, we would argue that, um, that we need a, a state, not a state plan, an, um, an amendment to our mental health plan agreement with the state that would share, that would have them sharing part of the costs. We've discussed with them numerous, on numerous occasions the fact that, you know, once this is done, um, that we want to revisit with them and reserve the right to reopen um, negotiations with them um, with the MHP contract related to KDA implementation. No. Uh, so if you have reserves and AP, you can use them for mental health services? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Counties have flexibility, total flexibility. Well, uh, well uh, there, there's, a, there's a caveat to that. that. Entitlements are going to be There is a caveat to that, and that's one of the issues that we didn't touch on directly, which is that theoretically counties have flexibility within their um, sub-accounts to be able to manage the the funds um, to cover the programs that were realigned to them. The state has reserved the right to, um, in statute, to go in and move things around based on what they think the need is for entitlement programs such as EPSDT and such as drug Medi-Cal because um, they're unsure about and um, they're unsure about the um, the appropriateness of the distribution formulas um, in the first couple of years. So it's a very um, unsettling situation for counties to be in where, you know, they're, they're supposed to be managing based on the revenues that, that have been distributed to them in that year. Um, but, if they, but, but if there's a chance that the state is going to come in and somehow try to move money from one county to the next to satisfy what the state sees as um, statewide obligations, then it's, you know, creates uncertainty. If they do it, um, if, if we try to manage in the first couple of years by um, looking at how the growth is distributed, which is what we would advocate, um, then it makes it more predictable for counties to be able to, to manage the program. Diane, you had a question in the back. Diane. Oh, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, we, we, 
we haven't focused a whole lot on that. It kind of slid under the radar yeah. screen. But yeah, we were quite shocked and surprised to see the governor less than a year after um, the, the ink was dry on um, the realignment structure proposing to come back and take some of the mental health money. Um, what you just said. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, that's why I, I keep, we keep emphasizing that this, this, this realignment of EPSDT and Medi-Cal managed care only works to the extent that we have enough resources collectively in county mental health to provide the state match. And, um, and a big piece of that is the predictability and the um, revenues that we get from 1991 realignment. And um, again, with the governor proposing to take half of the um, CalWORKs MOE growth for the state general fund, um, it just, you know, it, it, it um, messes with our predictability and it also takes money away from counties um, who are really trying in these first couple of years, especially, to, um, to ensure that they have the match to, to meet their Medi-Cal responsibilities. But don't forget what I said about the 1991 realignment responsibilities too. State hospitals, those rates are going up. Um, IMD rates are going up statutorily every year. Um, and we can't get federal match for, for those services. So those obligations are there. The costs continue to increase. And if money is taken away of 90, from 91 realignment, then um, it impacts not only Medi-Cal, but also the, um, the, thing, the other obligations that we have at the local level. Yes. I mean, you know, it's, it's a concern. I mean, yeah. if you have entitlement programs mixed with non-entitlement programs, you know, you have to meet the entitlement. And, um, you know, if, if at some point we get to the point where we don't have enough money to meet the entitlement um, and we still have obligations in other areas, then that can be a problem. In the substance use and mental health sub-account, it's, it's really a concern. Um, to both, like I said, substance use and mental health because you are mixed in with entitlement and non-entitlement programs and you're mixing um, managed and unmanaged programs. Mm -hmm. So it's really um, very high anxiety inducing for county behavioral health directors right now. We're here. You're talking about the MHP agreement, right? The MHP contract. I'll let Don answer that one. Or mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, the state had to make some assumptions when they put those fiscal estimates into their 
mental health plan agreements, they've, um, they have articulated that they're not factoring in anything related to the Affordable Care Act, um, that they're basically just going off of trends in, in uh, claims in the short term Medi-Cal system, um, which in itself is flawed. So, I, I mean, I, I take the amount in the MHP agreement with kind of a grain of salt and recognize that that will be amended at some point in all likelihood. Maybe one more question, then we're, we're running out of time. We run out of yeah, time. Yeah, we, we are out of time. <laughs> Diane Cummins is probably waiting for us. Go ahead. Clearly, there are tussles and uh, conflicts between the counties and the state, have been, are, and will be. And clearly, the state's going to try and take money from the counties, and the county's going to try and stop that. And that'll go back and forth as it has in the past. It's hard to sit here and look at the previous slide and the increases in dollars when what seems to be the case is that counties are planning for the worst possibilities and they need to, of course, be responsible in how they manage what's going on in each county when there may be a potential for money just sort of being there. But again, you got to look at. You need to look at the whole system. So, for example, um, you know, again, we're just looking at ninety-one and two thousand eleven. Look at MHSA. That's projected over the next couple of years to be significantly less than the current fiscal year, due to um, unexpended funds that were in the state that were released in August, as well as the impacts of um, Proposition Thirty and of the capital gains tax laws changing at the federal level pushing more money into current year. So it's, you know, we're looking, you're looking at one funding stream in isolation and I, from, um, you know, the behavioral health side, I don't think you can do that. I think you need to look at it as a whole. Um, and uh, so anyway. And is that available? What's that? The, a slide with it, looking at it as a whole. Uh, right there um, is a snapshot. Um, It, it's um, we we've done numerous charts for, for charts for numerous presentations at different times. So yeah, it's it's definitely available, um, and we'll try to make sure that whatever you know most recent information we have about the whole of community mental health funding is uh, posted on our website. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.